Big Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Dick Norman. Some people call me Big Dick. Some people call me Tiny Dick. When I was growing up, everybody would be like, don't be a dick. Great, what the fuck else am I supposed to do? Um, for a long time, people ask me, how'd you get the name Dick? And I, of course, I'd be like, I don't fucking know. I was born with it. So when I was like 21, I finally sat down and my parents gave me the information, look, when you were born, your uncle picked you up, oon and on, and then you looked at him and gave him a dirty look, he turns around and tells us, this little fucker gave me a dirty look, his name is going to be Dick, from here on out. So they thought that was the worst that could happen to the family. Then my nephew was born. <laughs> I fucking love my nieces and nephews, I got five of them total. I have one nephew, he does not give a fuck. At all. So the one night I go to see him, and I'm bending down to talk to him as he's getting ready for bed, and I'm, his name's Colton, and I'm bending down, talking to him, like, hey, you getting ready to go to bed? And he fucking catches me with a left hook, knocks my gla glasses right on the fucking floor, like he was Rocky Balboa or something. I was like, most people would guide him back, like, no, don't do that. You can't hit people in the face, this isn't right. I give him a right hook back and knock him on his ass. <laughs> like, don't fucking hit me in the face. <laughs> Some people see hitting kids is wrong. I talk to my nieces and nephews like adults. <laughs> like, look, go pick up your fucking toys before I step on another goddamn Lego. <laughs> or if they leave their cars out, I got a whole race racetrack room set up in miles, and them little bastards will leave race cars all over my fucking house. And then when I step on one, they look at me like, what are you doing, you fat fuck? You crushed it. <laughs> it's like, no, you fucking left it there. <laughs> Sons of bitches. <laughs> so, the other night, we were watching the, me and my girlfriend were watching the NBA Finals. Who will watch that? Yeah, nobody watches basketball. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> so we made a bet. And the team that, I took the one team, she took the other. My team fucking or won, so we had to play basketball because she claims since she's seven fucking foot five and played basketball in high school and dunked and shit, that she could fucking out beat me in basketball. I get to the court and I'm shooting around and next thing I know I hear fucking MC Hammer playing and I look over to the right and she comes out just like a 97 Dream Team. I felt like I was on fucking Space Jam. She comes up, she's doing her workouts and stretching and like fucking jumping jacks and shit. Next thing I know, we're playing. She goes up, gets a dunk. I was like, son of a bitch. Fucking giant ass Latino. <laughs> so, it's my turn. I got the ball. I'm going up for a layup. She packs me. So this time I'm pissed. Like, fuck you. She goes, not in my house, motherfucker. And I go, look, we're fucking playing horse. Knock it off. <laughs> it doesn't fucking stop. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Speaking of summer being here, I was driving through Onaway today. You know, I don't know if anybody here has been to Onaway, but it really sucks dog balls. There's a place right before it called Tower, which is even fucking greater. <laughs> no, really, it fucking sucks. It's like, Tower's like driving down by the River Rouge. How many of you people have been down by the Rouge plant in Detroit? Yeah, you probably will get hepatitis ever. <laughs> So, I'm driving, and the classiest bitch you see walking through town, strutting her shit, this bitch has cut off pajama pants, a fucking Obama phone, and a wife beater that looks like somebody took a piss right down the back from all her titty sweat. And it doesn't fit. Like, when she turns around, all there is is fucking tits on the back, bigger than the front. The bitch looks like she has two asses right up front, split down the middle. The next thing you know, you see her on Craigslist. Ooh, look at the cock. <laughs> I love weed. <laughs> so this winter, I thought it'd be a great fucking plan to lose weight. You know, I'm hitting the three digits. Like, oh, fuck, I'm getting heavy. Fuck, I'm start to look like I'm fat as fuck. And now I was like, well, I gotta make money while I do it. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna audition for The Biggest Loser. Them fuckheads always seem to get lose weight. Somebody wins a lot of fucking money. So 
So I get the application and I'm filling it out like, okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. And it goes, what is the biggest sacrifice you've had to make in your life? And I'm sitting there at my TV stand because I'm too fucking lazy to sit at a table. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm. <coughs> biggest sacrifice. How big of a piece of shit can I be? Let's see. I have to buy bigger clothes. Mm, maybe donate my underwear to the... No, that's not going to work. Let's see. I hold a job. I mean, being fat has to stop me from working. Then it dawned on me. This is never going to work because even though I'm fat, I still get up and I fucking do shit. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. They must get people on there like, look, I'm fat, obese. McDonald's made me this way, so I might as well not do a fucking thing with my life. <laughs> Social Security, here I come. <laughs> All right, I work in the automotive industry. Nothing great. I like not an engineer or anything. I'm the fucking fool that sells people parts. <laughs> and I take classes. I want to further my education, you know. So they offer us classes on our field. And I'm riding it with this group of folks. And this one guy goes, we we're talking about where cars are made and stuff. And he goes, well, I don't figure Canada to be a country. Now, I'm kind of a, a dickhead, usually. And I'm sitting there and I just nicely ask him, what? <laughs> yeah, Canada's not a goddamn country. So I think and I think and I think. How the fuck do you figure Canada's not a different country? Just isn't. Canada's just two hours north of us and they say the Canada's uh, whatever their fucking theme song is <laughs> at the local racetracks and events. I lost track of that one. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, they use Canada shit for down here. So it makes it not a foreign country. I go, well, do you, you have to have an enhanced license or a pre passport to get there, right? Well, yeah. And they speak another language in most of it, right? Yeah. Then it's a different fucking country, man. I was like, they eat vinegar with their goddamn fries. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Not different. Not a different country at all. Are you fucking crazy? Nope. You'll see. One day, the United States and Canada will be one country. I don't fucking see it. That guy dropped a truck on his head yesterday. <laughs> Dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I used to co-host a Sunday night metal show with my cousin Tiny. No, <laughs> Tiny was not Tiny. I loved the guy to death. My homeboy. But this motherfucker is an easy 6'5", six, 6'6". 600 pounds or more. At the time when I was helping him, I was about 260. So I still wasn't small, but he was fucking batting for me. So I drove a Nissan Sentra. I was already too big for the car. He decides coming out like, hey man, we're going to take your car. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> my, my seat only goes so far back. And he's like, nope. We're going to take your car. Better gas mileage. I was like, I don't think that's going to stay true if we got 800 pounds in the front seat. Trust me. We'll make it work. So we're going out to the car. And I can just see, picture the car being alive, like, sitting there, having a good day. And then all of a sudden, here's... <clears throat> looks over. Oh, fuck. Don't, don't come here. Don't, don't. And the whole time the car's just shitting its pants like, no, do, do, do not, don't, don't. Looking at me like, please don't let him in the fucking car. No, no. Looks back at him. Come on, the seat doesn't go that far fucking back. There's no way you're going to fit your fat ass through the door. Looking at me like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You just bought me. You're going to ruin it. It's like putting a fucking Mack truck through a fucking virgin. It's not going to work. And I'm just sitting there looking at my car, just picturing it being alive like, oh fuck, this thing's going to kill me. And the whole time, while I'm sitting there too, I'm picturing the ending scene of, or the scene of what's eating Gilbert Grape, where his mom comes strolling up and gets in the car, and it's just cracking me up at the same time. So my cousin turns over, bends to sit in, and I'm still picturing my car like, don't sit, don't sit, no, we just had to wash clean, please don't. We get in there, that fucking car was riding on the rockers all the way to, from on the way to Sheboygan. I'm pulling myself to the left so I had room to drive, and he had the whole rest of the car front to back, side to side. We hit a bump 
on my side, and I swear to God, we were on two fucking wheels. <laughs> I was like, oh, holy fuck, fucking clown school, hold on. And I, if anybody was behind me, that's all they would say is like, what the fuck? And then come up, and be like, this is the scene from What's Eating Gilbert Grid. Look at him, he's got a heavy motherfucker with a little guy. Perfect. We're going to record this on our cell phones the whole fucking trip. And then I sit there and I think, what was eating Gilbert Grape? His mother. <laughs> Thank you, Traverse City. My name is Dick Norman, and that's all I got for tonight. <laughs>